I run this YouTube channel for two primary reasons. First things first, without it, I'm hollow. But also because I have so many opinions and topics I'm passionate about that nobody around me shares. I've talked about a lot of things on this channel, and Metroidvanias not being one of them. Now the primary reason for this is that I don't like them, but not enough to hate them, so they kind of fall into that passionless pit of meh. I think the primary reason behind my general distaste for them is that while I like difficult games, being thoroughly confused and walking in circles is generally not what I consider to be fun. I'd rather a game test me mechanically and strategically. If I wanted to test a patience, I'd watch Paint Dry while listening to Ed Sheeran's Divide. So how did a little indie game teach a man to love a genre when some of the franchise greats failed to impress? Well, first, we gotta cover the history. Pseudo Regalia was a small-scale project made for a video game competition, the main dev then expanding the game into a full-scale $6 release. When I stumbled across this game on Steam, two things caught my eye. First off, 98% positivity with over 1,600 entries? Oh, never mind, I get it. When I read up on this game and took in the brutal honesty the dev displayed about the nature of the project and then saw that his next project looked like a far more realized rendition of this parkour movement that they were showing off, and it looked so fun. I decided to throw a few bones his way, not knowing if I'd ever actually play it. Three days later, and six hours later, I walked out a changed man, having experienced one of the most engaging games I've played in recent memory, and also having a much better understanding of the Metroidvania genre as a whole. If you're already bored of my voice, first off, kill, and second, go play this game. Worst case scenario, that's $6 gone from your $40 olive oil fund. Hey there, everybody! Pseudo Regalia stars a Cybele, a bunny cat, goat rabbit, goat cat girl who for whatever reason has arrived to save this kingdom whose princess has sunk out of public view, sending things into disrepair. Don't sweat the small stuff though, because the game certainly won't focus more on what's directly in front of you for now. The first thing that caught my attention were the low-poly character animations, which is a specific aesthetic choice that I always appreciate, because it's deceptively hard to pull off. Breaking down the fundamentals of movement into less frames means that each one has to display far more info for the movement to be readable. And in all honesty, Pseudo Regalia is actually a mixed bag in that regard. While all of Cybele's moves look great, some enemies can be surprisingly hard to read. This sword swing right here is simply too choppy to get a proper grip on its hurtbox. But whatever, you'll quickly learn that this game is less focused on the combat and more on its platform-based exploration, which is unarguably where it shines incredibly bright. My favorite type of game is the kind that allows you to forge your own path provided you have a solid grip on the mechanics. Whether that's taking on a boss under leveled, skipping whole stages in SM64, or getting somewhere prematurely by finessing the system. Pseudo Regalia is really good at that last part. Metroidvanias are characterized by the progression of your tool set, opening up new pathways in previously explored areas that lead to more power-ups and routes to explore. In something like Metroid Prime, this process is heavily gated and streamlined by doors and pathways that require very, very specific abilities to access them. And while this isn't a problem per se, it's definitely not promoting player expression. One thing this funky GOAT game does that I really like is that the vast majority of areas are wide open from the outset, and the basic moves like jumping, attacking, and sliding under objects are enough to get you to quite a few places pretty quickly. Pretty close to the beginning is the empty Bailey area where you find the slide jump. This speeds up movement drastically, and also provides you with a few different ways to completely snap this game's intended progression in half with a hilariously overpowered backflip out of the slide jump. This is a choreographed move with its own animations and sound effects, so it is by no means an exploit. But with this singular move, you can go and do so many things out of order. This led me to homebrewing multiple platforming solutions way outside the bounds of what the game expected. Couple this with the fact that the flow is extremely smooth and easy to come to grips with, this is genuinely some of the most fun I've ever had controlling a game. Some of the other abilities that you get are really interesting too, like the shockwave that carries indefinitely, so there are some very unexpected places that it gets used. The bounce jump, which I believe is supposed to be found really early, but I missed it and was still able to proceed off of my own ingenuity. There's the wall run that promotes a ton of premier cheese, but also some really difficult clutch platforming challenges. Not all of the abilities are perfect, you can throw your weapon, but it's only used in like one area for a short period of time, and outside of that it only exists to punish you because the enemies can knock it out of your hands. But by and large, the game has a great feel, and the open book nature of the world allows you to approach it from so many bizarre angles. Now, technically speaking, there is an underlying theme about fortune and power within the narrative, but it's so loose and unscripted, I didn't really get anything from it. However, the setting is a massive, corrupted castle, and I gotta say, I love the vibes here. Visually, 
computer regalia feels ripped straight from the N64 with its widespread muddy texture, simple geometry, and sparse furnishings. It really truly feels like it's pulled right from that era, giving me those warm, cozy vibes of staying up late and exploring the depths of the N64's long library of enchanting tales even though I wasn't alive for that and didn't own one until this year. Much of the experience takes place indoors, and when you're taken out into the air, you're met with very little outside of the closed-in skybox that consistently makes the world feel ever so slightly claustrophobic. The areas themselves, though, sport this strange, unexplainable feeling of realism, like outside that big door or hidden behind the blinding god rays flooding in through the grand windows exists a world. I believe that rapturous, immersive feeling is born from this unabashed dedication to its tone. Even the soundtrack with its lo-fi-esque instruments with heavily melody-driven tracks, they cast a foreboding, longing atmosphere, but each with a twist to properly suit the area you're currently in. The standout track for me personally was the Twilight Theater with this jazzy, mostly upbeat composition. The tracks even feature heavy clarinet, and <laughs> you know I was that boy! I know you all know I was that boy. Now, as a game, it's hard to assign real damning criticism because it's the video game equivalent of a pack of cigarettes, but I would have preferred there to be bosses guarding at least one or two of the big items you're tasked with finding. Only having a short tutorial boss and the final fight was strange, and while I understand that the combat was not a heavily emphasized aspect of the adventure, and most of the attacks and skills are far more applicable as a means to platform, I question why it's really here when so little was done with it. Still though, keep in mind, one man dev team. It's impressive enough that the game runs six hours and is this good. And whether there are a bunch of bosses or not, just getting to those necessary items is hard enough. Which actually perfectly spins me around into vomiting out my next point. <laughs> I mentioned earlier how I love the open nature of the world and how it allowed me to get lost and by proxy formulate my own solutions to the puzzles and platform challenges. The big reason as to why all of that works in the end is that there is no map in this game. This big, windy, maze of corridors and towering platform gauntlets has zero guidance or indication of where you are when compared to save points, objectives, completed zones, nothing. You either piece together a mental map or you wander around until you stumble on the next area you need to go. And while this sounds like absolute hell on paper, it is! I'm sadistic to myself. Someone should invent a word for that. This overall works because the collective map isn't too big, and since most areas are open from the get-go, there's no need to remember the exact location of 10 different doors that can be opened with each new skill. As you collect skills and move in large circuits around the castle, you'll naturally stumble across the areas you've yet to complete, slowly forming muscle memory and a rough understanding of where everything is in relation to each other. My biggest problem with Metroidvanias is that more often than not, I'm left aimlessly wandering and hopelessly confused. Challenges tend to be so specifically tied to a given ability that I always feel like I'm being gatekept from the game truly opening up. Like there's never a point where I sit back and say, dang, I get it, this connects here and now I can do this. The world is so interconnected, wow! Because things open up so slowly, there's never a big drop of content to make me feel like I'm tangibly getting stronger, just drip feeding a few more routes at a time so I never really feel like I'm exploring? Like I said before, this isn't inherently a design flaw, it's just something I'm not too fond of. It's kinda hard to describe with words, but I hope it makes sense when I say that Pseudo-Regalia's open, approachable nature essentially created the opposite feeling within me, because once you have your first three moves, you can go nearly anywhere and slowly piece things together as the game consciously loops you around its map. In many ways, it feels like the game people describe Metroid or Castlevania as, not what I've personally experienced. That being said though, much like any other Metroidvania I've played, there was a big roadblock right at the beginning. I wandered for nearly an hour, having no clue where the game expected me to go next, because before you get the slide jump, you're very restricted. I felt that exact same feeling I feel when playing any other game in this genre, the difference being that I reached a super fun, satisfying payoff. So I think this game taught me something about the Metroidvania scene as a whole. I think that, at large, the opening hours of Metroidvanias kind of just suck. You see a door, locked. A ledge, it's just slightly out of reach, dude. Oh, check out that power-up. Come back in 12 hours when you've completely forgotten and you're doing one last sweep of the map before the final boss fight. It's a conscious act of dangling keys over a bassinet and boy am I ever a baby. But I think that's kind of the point to make the player wander, to struggle to gain a foothold in the ladder of progress, to make that momentum feel that much more exhilarating when the ball finally gets rolling, when you start piecing together exactly where to go and what does what where, and <laughs> why are my hands shaking? It must be anticipation! Mom, I'm having an emotion! The point I'm making is that the beginning is rough, but 
you gotta stick it out. Bolster that patience and see the payoff because it will be there. You will get stronger and you will feel that satisfaction of piecing together the world and uncovering all of its secrets. This newfound appreciation and understanding the underlying philosophy of Metroidvanias, at least what I perceive as understanding, makes me want to revisit all of those games I've dropped, Mega Man ZX, Metroid Prime, Hollow Knight, and conquer them once and for all. All because of the funky little cat rabbit cat goat rabbit goat. Go play Pseudo Regalia. If you like Metroidvanias, you're in for a treat. If you don't, I don't know, you may just be in for a spiritual awakening. I tossed this video together in a couple of days. <laughs> Does it show? My wrist is in a brace, okay? I need to be taking things slowly. Oops.